Hello and welcome to part 22 of my video series on how to use Blender 2.7. In this video, I'll be showing you how to join, merge, and fill holes in meshes. Let's go ahead and dive right in though. I'll click on my splash screen to get rid of it. And you'll notice that I'm starting off this video with a cube that I've already gone ahead and subdivided up, and I've actually deleted one of the faces to create a hole in one side of this cube. If I orbit around the cube though, you'll notice that I actually have not one hole, but two and a third hole including this big gash that I deleted from the corner of my cube. In this video, I'll be showing you how to fill holes in meshes using different techniques. Why am I doing this? Well, there are times when you're modeling, especially when you're modeling organic shapes like characters or really anything that's curved, and you'll want to actually at some times or at some points delete part of your mesh and remodel it in order to get the topology that you want. In other words, the right edges and the right spots and the right faces and the right at the right angles that you want in order to have the best mesh possible. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you several ways of filling these holes, including a very complicated hole so that you can get the topology that you want. And in a future video, I'm going to show you an even more advanced technique, uh, which uses a, a tool called the knife tool. I'm going to start off simply though, but the first hole I'm going to fill, I'm actually going to do it the hard way or the longer way. This is the way that I used to fill holes until I discovered a much, much simpler way. To fill this square hole that is basically just one face that I've deleted, what I used to do is I used to take one edge of the hole and I would extrude it. So in other words, I take that one edge in edge select mode and I tap E. When you do that, you're just extruding an edge, which means that you're just getting a flat plane that sticks out. What I would then do is I would scale down that edge and kind of drag it down so it looks like it's kind of mostly filling the hole. It might stick out a little bit and that's okay. It doesn't actually matter at all. And then I would take the vertices in vertex select mode. I'll take that one and that one and merge them together. In other programs like 3ds Max, I believe this is called welding. It's the same thing, it's merging in Blender. So what I'll do in this case is I'll select this vertex, hold shift, and then click on this one, or right click on this one to select it, and then I'll find the merge option. You can find that under the W specials menu, and there it is, the keyboard shortcut is Alt M. So what I'll do is I'll click that, and then I get options, because maybe I want the merged uh, vertices to be, or to end up where this vertice is, or maybe I want them to end up where this one is, or maybe in the middle. There are several options here. So again, I can press W and select Merge or Alt-M. So I'll press Alt-M. And so I'll select at first or at last or at center. Generally, I use those three first. So in this case, I'm going to select the, this one first, hold Shift, this one last. That means I want to select at last. I want to end up right there. So Alt-M on my keyboard and at last. There we go. I'll do it in the opposite direction this time. Select this one, hold Shift, select this one, and then Alt-M and this time at first, because I selected that one first. There we go. To check that this actually worked and that you actually don't have any duplicate vertices, I'm just gonna select all of them, or those bottom ones, and grab them with the G key, and just wiggle them around to make sure there's no other vertice, uh, or no other duplicate vertice right there. And that one looks okay too. So that one is done, and that's the long way. I'm gonna zoom around now to the bottom of my cube where there's also a hole, and this is the quick way. I'm going to go into edge select mode and select just one of the edges around this hole and press F. F is the keyboard shortcut for fill, and it will fill in any hole as long as you select at least one of the edges. Now sometimes I found that, at least some people have showed me before that you have to select at least two sides. Um, sometimes I select all the sides. Um, it doesn't really matter, usually just one side will work, and tap F, and there we go, it's filled. And yes, it does work perfectly for a simple four-sided or three-sided hole. So that's the simple way of filling, but what do you do if you have a much more complicated um, hole in your mesh? Well, there are different ways of doing this, and I actually have recorded this video more than once, and I've done it differently in every take that I've done on this video. What I'm going to do is select the entire circumference of the hole. In fact, let's just try selecting one of the edges and tapping F. Note that doesn't work. It just fills in the closest area. So what I'll do is I'll hold Alt down on my keyboard and right click on an edge and it'll select the edge loop as far as it can go. But then I'll hold Alt and Shift and just keep selecting around the circumference until we get the entire thing. And I'll tap 
F on my keyboard. That will fill the entire hole with a single n-gon, a single multi-multi-sided polygon that's not actually flat at all. And then we're gonna have to do some reconstruction. This is where joining comes in. If I have two vertices selected on opposite sides of usually this works best on, on the opposite sides of the same polygon or same n-gon and I press J on my keyboard in edit mode J means join um, so now when I have those two vertices selected and I press J it creates an edge between them this might not work across different parts of your entire mesh or it might do things unexpectedly like go the wrong way around your mesh I've found but this is where we're at so we have that edge what about let's say these ones I'll tap J. Okay, that seems to work pretty well. What about these two? Well, there's an edge in the way. Is it going to work properly? Let's go ahead and see. I'll tap J, and yes, it worked okay. So now we're starting to get something of a mesh that we want, but things aren't in the right spot. This one's obviously too far in, so what do we do? Well, I'm going to take a look at the coordinates of different vertices and figure out where they should go. So what do I mean by that? Well, this vertice obviously needs to go more over that way. In fact, if I press 1 and 5, you can see that it's, it's pretty much right in this direction, although I'm not entirely sure. But if, but if I switch to my side view, in fact, I'll press uh, Shift or Control 3 rather, you'll see that and Control 3 goes to the left view, 3 just goes to the right view. Uh, there we go. You'll see that it's not lined up. So how do I do this? Do I just eyeball it? No, I'm not going to just eyeball it. I'm going to select this vertice, which is in the right spot, and I'm going to look at its coordinates, which are under the side panel over here. So I'll click on this little plus, or you can tap N on your keyboard, and up here in the transform section, you'll see that on this green axis, it's negative one, or it's at negative one. If I move it, you'll see that changes. So negative one is the right um, coordinate. So I'll select this one and just type in here negative one and press enter. Is it right from on the um, x-axis? Well, this one is 0 point or negative 0 0.6 and this one is negative 0 0.6. So it's lined up perfectly now. This one is in the right spot. I am missing edges between some vertices though. So I'm going to select these two and press J to join and these two and press J to join. That one is solved. This section here though is, is funny. I actually need to make this into two separate um, faces. So what I can do is select one of the edges and subdivide it. So I can select the edge in edge select mode and press W and subdivide. Now that I've done that it's actually two separate edges with a vertice in the middle. I can do the same thing here. I'll press control 3 and I'll select this one and it's at um, on the Y axis it's on it's at negative 1 so I'll type in negative 1 here, and then on the Z axis, it's at 1. So I'll select it and type 1, and now we know that it's in the exact right spot. So I can select those two and press J. Hopefully you're getting the gist of how I'm going to be doing this. So I'm going to select this edge and press W and subdivide because it needs to actually go straight up and down. There are different ways of doing this, of course. In fact, what I might do, instead of doing it the same way as this section, is I might actually delete this face. So I'll select X and delete faces. And maybe instead, I will um, select this edge and go E to extrude it. But then I'll tap Z to go just up and down. But if you press E and then X, Y, or Z, it'll be constrained in that direction. I'm not going to go all, up all the way, because I'm going to merge these two together. W, merge, at last, so this one goes up. This vertice is at the is at 0 0.6 on the z-axis, so this one will be as well. Let's go ahead and fill in that section, F, and let's go in fact ahead and do these ones a little bit more uh, of a sane way. So I'll delete these faces, and I'll just extrude up all three of these, E, Z, and go up. And now I'll merge these two together. W merge at last. And then W merge at last. And then this one is at on the z-axis 1. So this one needs to be as well, as does this one. And then I can just go ahead and fill this one in 
and fill this one in again with the F key. Once I think I have it filled in, I want to do some checking. So I want to make sure that there aren't duplicated or two vertices in the same spot. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab with the G key uh, many of the vertices and make sure that they are not in the um, wrong or there's not two of them. The last thing I want to say is sometimes, depending on the techniques that you use and the specific mesh that you're working on, um, some of the faces that you end up with could be in the wrong direction. How can you tell that a face is in the wrong direction? Well, the direction of a face is called its normal. And its normal can be in one of either two directions, obviously, either outwards or inwards. And if it looks like it's a different color, it's probably in the wrong direction. So what I'm going to do to just show you what that looks like is select a face, go down to my third tab here to shading and UVs on my tool shelf, and I'm going to click under normals, flip direction. When I do that, you'll see that it looks like it has a different color, and in fact, from some angles, it looks like it turns black, and that means that it's facing the wrong way. If I go into um, perspective mode, you'll see that on the inside, it looks right from this angle, and this whole section look, looks like it is the back faces. It's a different shading. How can you fix this? Well, the same way that I, I just looked at around here. I can go down to my third tab in edit mode, and I'll click on recalculate or flip direction. You can also just select your entire mesh in edit mode and click on recalculate. That will often fix your problem, although sometimes you have to do it face by face and flip direction right there. So now my cube is all patched up, I have no more holes, and I'm happy with the topology. And that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.